Alright, so I did a little bit of cleaning up as well as uh, reorganizing this guppy camera. So I like that now it's a whole lot more simple than how it was in the beginning. Um, so as you can see, we're a pretty far distance away from, uh, from the reference beam. I uh, got a whole lot of different optics over there and stuff like that. So over here though, um, the point is again to get these two numbers over here, r sub x and r sub y, um, to be the same uh, no matter the distance. That means that the beam is uh, properly collimated. So I am collimating the beam <coughs> by again, uh, you know, turning this back and forth to see if I can get those numbers the same despite you know where it is on the breadboard. Um, so I just did that and it seems like uh, I can get it steady at 476 pretty consistently. I made a small little chart over here of uh, the numbers that I was getting. So now that those are looking pretty consistent, um, I can begin the next phase of the project. And here is uh, the the amplifier that I made, I put together. Um, so, you know, I hooked it up to a power supply. Um, got this input output set up over here. Um, so, yeah. Now that uh, that is taken care of, I can begin a few things. As a matter of fact, um, so. <clears throat> What I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to be selecting the appropriate optics um, from over here and uh, inserting them in the beam path so that I can characterize the beam to uh, the specifications that I have um, over in a notebook over here and on a Mathematica. Well, let me show you. So this is uh, some code that me and my co-worker put together the other day just characterizing what uh, the beam is you know gonna it's pretty much just the math of the beam so you know this is the math behind um, uh, our Gaussian beam over here and this is what I'm gonna be doing today while my co-worker is out so uh, yeah and uh, I'll see you in a bit